here we go. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you for the music. I was just about to break out and sing. So just in time, you turned it off. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. I'm, I'm very excited for this opportunity um, in this partnership for Expand Now to be able to provide uh, technical assistance. I'm going to share with you, share my screen and feel free along the way to um, interrupt and ask any questions that you may have. I, that does not bother me at all. Actually, it excites me um, when we could have engagement. So feel free to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, so Hannah, I'm assuming that you can see my full screen. Perfect. All right. So um, I, I'm, I love doing sessions on vision and mission. Um, I do a great deal of leadership training and organizational development training. Um, and over the years, um, I'm going to say that, you know, I used to, when I was on boards early in my career, and they would bring up the word strategic planning. Like I, I would dread those upcoming meetings. Um, and I see, is it Sicily? <laughs> Sicily smiling and nodding. Oh, they used to be so painful. Um, but now I'm understanding the importance of it, right? Like I, I get that it's, it's extremely important to have these plans, but more important for moving organizations forward, moving even teams forward and keeping us motivated and inspired is the fact that we understand what we stand for, right? And what we're trying to achieve. It's even more important now in what I call the hashtag era of communication, where everybody wants to be a part of a hashtag. Typically the hashtags represent um, what your organization stand for as well and what, and what you're trying to achieve or great moments even in a moment um, and capturing those moments or events um, along the way. And so, um, you know, we're going to end this session, we're going to talk about a vision statement, we're going to talk about a mission statement, and we're going to talk about something that, is, like I said, is really important to me, is leaning into what our values are, and particularly our core values. So again, feel free to ask any questions that you may have, or put them in the Q&A, um, and Hannah will be um, monitoring the chat in the Q&A, and feel free, Hannah, if if you feel okay with it to interrupt if questions come through, okay? Um, so there's value in our vision, right? And for those of you who are um, also in those leadership positions, which I'm gonna make say that we all are leaders in some way, shape or form, we have to understand that people um, really get attached to what leaders stand for, and then they get behind the vision and the mission mission of organizations. So we have to also be connected to our mission and our visions as well. I want to recognize um, Dr. Pam Love, who just joined us, who's one of the Expand Now members. Um, and so you will be meeting her in the future and other technical assistance as well as one-on-ones. I believe that focusing in on our vision and our mission is the road to greatness, right? It is what takes organizations from good to great. Um, when we can say like, this is our road ahead. Um, if we end up in the bushes or the trees over here, we, we know how to get out and we know how to get back on the path, right? Um, so it's, it's really important for us to know that. It's also important for us to cultivate the core values, which guide and are guiding lights to where we are. And we're gonna spend some time focusing on those. And I'm gonna tell you um, what I mean when I say, you know, cultivating core values. And then I'm gonna hear from you what you think, and we could use the chat. And for those of you um, who feel comfortable can also um, unmute and share. And so um, as we talk about our core values, these are our, the things that really keep us going day to day, right? It's the things that we lean in on, on those days where it's tough. It's those things that your team leans in on when they feel like they, they you know, the, the, the barriers are insurmountable, but it's also the things that bring you joy, right? When you can see that something that you have envisioned, something that's part of your mission, something that's part of your core values comes to light and comes to fruition. So the values really help us determine what is important 
um, for us, right? Um, and it provides even general guidelines for conduct. I've been a part of organizations where we used our core values after they've been defined for even um, or for even for I'm sorry employee evaluations, right? Where we have you know where, where those are incorporated in the 360 evaluations. Are you demonstrating what you say that you believe in and what we believe in? This is a good place for interviews. Even what are, what are some of the values? that you will bring to work with you every day. So um, we could use our core values and, and values in general and many different facets of organizational development as well. And in our organizational values, they become the guiding principles, right? Um, it's things like leadership occurs within the context of the values. Yesterday, I was training a group and one of the, the, the women said to me, she said, you know, this seems insurmountable to me to be able to take, you know, the core values and to shift the entire organization. And right now we're such a toxic place, Lori. I just don't know if I have it in me, right? Um, I don't know if anybody's ever felt that way before, right? If, if, if you've ever felt that way before. And so what I said to her was, um, what about your team? Do you think you can work with your team first, your core team, whoever they that might be? So I want you to think about who's on your core team, who's going to be the ambassadors to move your values forward, right? Um, and I'm not sure what everybody's organization looks like, but I want you to sort of think about that. Um, with this particular leader, um, she was the executive leader. So her, her team, um, her inner circle, which um, Pam uh, talks a lot about as well. Her inner circle were her senior leaders. That was her senior leadership team. And so I said, so the first thing you have to do is work with your senior leadership team. Figure out what your values are. What is this team's values? And then ask the questions like, how are we going to show, how are we going to show up in these values every day? right? How are we going to show up in these values every day? What are the organizational values and what are our personal and professional values? We also want to sometimes evaluate where do they collide? Are there value collisions? So we'll talk about that too as we go forward. But leaders should be intent with um, elevating organizational values as well as your values. Because remember I already said that people first get behind the leader and then they get behind the mission and the vision. Okay, so it drives also commitment. And how does it drive? How does it drive commitment? Um, it drives commitment because people will come to your organization based on what you said that you're going to do, and what you believe in, and what your dreams are, for either internally or externally or a combination of the bo of both. They also identify um, your commitment professionally and personally. And it also, when you spend time in this, it allows you to identify theirs. And then when we spend time on this, it allows us to develop shared values. Any questions or thoughts? Okay. All right. So. Think about values as magnets to our moral compass, right? Magnets of our moral compass. Again, a few decades ago, when we did program development and leadership development, we weren't learning these kinds of things, right? We were learning like set a goal. How do you achieve the goal? What's the tactical applications to achieving those goals? And it was all very technical. But what we have to understand is that when we're building organizations, when we're building teams, that there's a technical meaning, policies, procedures, deadlines, dates, but there's also adaptive. The adaptive things are the, the, the pace sometimes where we ignore. The adaptive um, fixes, changes, development areas are the ones that tap into people's values, right? People may, they may argue about the fact that you changed an intake form or an application and you switched it all around um, or you made it um, you uh, within the, oh, I'm sorry, you made it digital versus a paper one, right? But 
if we don't have a conversation, like really, you know, Kat, why are you pushing back on this digital forum? Like, what's the big deal, right? And Kat may say, this is what it is. It's, it's, it's going to digital, that's it. Kat may then have a conversation with someone and find out that that person doesn't have the capacity to access the digital forum, doesn't understand our language with the digital forum, right? May have used Google forms, but never used Jot, may have used uh, Sign Up Genius, but never used something else, right? Uh, Doodle. And so that requires an adaptation. And as leaders and organizational developers, we, we also have to deal with the adaption that people may have to make as well, okay? So we're going to, um, when we identify our values, they become fuel for motivation and fuel for inspiration. And that's what we want as leaders. We want people to be motivated, but we also want them to be inspired. And that's why all of this is so important. So as we look at our core values, Hannah's going to drop a document in the chat for you that you can click um, and download. While you're on Zoom, it may say, take some time. Don't get frustrated. It'll be there. And if not, we will make sure that you get it after the session. It'll be a part of the materials. So I, I'm glad that we're sharing this document with you um, because this is something that you can do with your teams. Uh, Dr. Pam and I do lots of leadership training together and we use this form regularly. Um, and basically what we do is we ask um, folks that we're working with is to create a, take this list and there may be other words like yesterday um, in the group that I was with, someone put, um, I think respect. Uh, da, 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 let me look. Yeah, she said respect wasn't on this list. So one of hers was, her core values was respect. So you can also add your own. So the first thing I would like for you to do is look at the list and pick out about 10, thing, 10 values that you think um, speak to you and how you show up in the world. Don't put them in the chat, just write them down um, somewhere if you can. And I know the font is a little bit small, but you may also know what your core values are, but I'll read out a couple here if you can't um, see all the words, but we have things like acceptance and achievement, empathy, we have encouragement, we have freedom, we have fun, caring, generosity, um, individuality, innovation, intelligence, power, risk-taking, professionalism, love, um, grace, growth, flexibility. And in the T's, we have teamwork, thankfulness, thoughtfulness, and traditionalism, and trustworthiness. There's uniqueness and usefulness, punctuation, relationships, reliability. So I'm just throwing out a few, but come up with your own. If you're good with using the reaction button, put your thumbs up when you've gotten your 10 together. I know it's not easy. Don't think too much about it. Just when it speaks to you, you know that feeling like that's me. That's important to me. Okay, we got 10, somewhere around that. Okay, I see some smiles. <laughs> I see some ink pens. <laughs> All right. So now I want to click on the chat, Hannah let, me, Hannah. let me know if it changes my view. So can you guys still see the screen if I'm in the chat? We can still see you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to narrow down your list to no more than five from your existing 10. 
Thank you, Dewana. Go ahead and put in, and you could put this in the chat if you like, if you can, if you're in a place where you can. And there's a reason I'm asking you to put it in the chat. If you could put five or four, some people may say, you know what, Lori, I only have three. I'm putting that in there. Anybody want to share? Or say it out loud. If you're not able to put it in the chat, you can uh, raise your hand. And thank you so much, April. Thank you, Kat. I love playfulness. I've never seen that one. That's good. Open-mindedness. Okay, who we got? That's Caitlin. Thank you. Hannah, thank you. Michelle, thank you. All right. Oh, thank you, Regina. So we have we have a few in here. Thank you for those who, who were able to do so. Um, we have a few in here. Anybody, um, as you can see, or if you can't see, let me say we have April has a family creativity, fun, accountability. We have encouragement, flexibility, growth and playfulness and resourcefulness for Kat. Caitlin has open-mindedness, compassion, growth and kindness. Hana has collaboration, dedication, inspiration, and relationships. Michelle, accountability, empathy, wisdom, family, humility. Regina has fun and caring relationships, teamwork, and passion. Andrea has um, abundance and freedom and collaboration, performance and creativity. And Regina said, ooh, and empathy. <laughs> and we have professionalism, proactive, product, excuse me, proactivity, autonomy, innovation, passion, community, collaboration, risk-taking, advocacy, and leadership. What do you guys notice about that list from our colleagues, from, from each other? What do you notice about that list? There's some repeats. There are some repeats. What else? Thank you. Is it Cicely? Is that correct? Cecile. Cecile. Thank you, Cecile. So Regina said there's some repeats. What's the opposite of the repeats? There's some differences, right? So out of the five, and some people put four, there is none that are exactly the same, are there? But all of us, all of us here today have something in common, right? Yes, we're all here because we believe in the mission and the things that we're doing. We believe in this organization. We believe that hopefully the if for those of you who are here for technical assistance, that what you're doing will serve communities, right? That are the same, that are suffering the same. And you bought into the fact that you want to provide that service. So you could have a whole team of people who come and work for your organization or volunteer for your organization and all wholeheartedly believe in the same thing, but still have different core values in their heart. Right? Yes. And so as we start planning and developing our organizations, these are conversations that we need to have in mind because these are all wonderful things. We would not want um, Hana's not to have the ability to collaborate right? Because that, that drives her. She said that. We would not want Caitlin to be in a space where she can't show kindness. That means that Caitlin could probably not work with people who don't show kindness. She would have a difficult time, right? And so these are things that we need to be aware of, right? As we build out our organizations or improve them or go into strategic planning and go, or go into sort of revitalizing or working with the board even, you want to pick, you want to have board members who share some of the same core values, even if they're not the same. But the point of this is we also want to make opportunities for people to be able to work in a space 
where they feel as if their core values are being tapped, right? Okay, so that is so important as we look at developing the mission and the value because we need to find out, does it match? right? Sometimes we just dive straight into like doing this vision and this mission and doing all of our program goals. And we don't spend time getting to know what the team, what motivates and inspires the team. And we already said that the core values that we bring to the table is what motivates and inspires us. So does it match? As we're doing a reflection about building our vision and mission, what are the beliefs behind the values that we choose? Somebody said family in there. What's interesting is I think that only a couple of people said family. Does that mean they can't work at your organization? No. The folks who didn't? No. But that might mean that um, they're not going to be that person in there on Sundays because maybe they'll do work. They worship with their family on Sundays. Maybe they have Sunday traditions with their family. And maybe that's something that we need to know as we're building our teams and building the, the, even the aspects of the hours of operation and things like that. Like these are again, things that to be aware of. And then what are the behaviors do you exhibit that, that reflect that? So some, for some leaders, this is gut wrenching because they have, they have values. And for some reason, they're not operating in their values. And for some people who are following the leader, the leader isn't also not creating opportunities as allow them to show up. So that's important reflection. So as we spend the next, our, our um, next half hour together, um, let's talk about the vision. And now we have sort of the background. Any comments about that first teaching sp space of core values and, and why we spent time on that? No, anybody want to want to share anything? Okay. okay. All right. So as we look at vision and looking at creating a vision statement, the vision statement, remember that slide with the road, the vision statement is how are we going to get there? How are we going to? Yes. Oh, you. Oh, yes. It was hard to narrow down. Yes. Um, thank you. And, and oh, I forgot. Thank you so much. I'm glad you said that. Um, the reason that it's the reason that I ask you to narrow it down is because we, because we typically only operate in a few core values. We're not operating out of ten core values, by the way. We're typically operating in, out of a space of three to four core values on a regular basis. Maybe we're operating in a value um, in a specific project where um, commitment or timeliness is important, but really. If you, like when I went to um, Rwanda, every time somebody greeted you, every time somebody, every time you said something like, I'm so sorry, you know, people would be like, not a problem, right? And eventually people were like, no, this is a problem. Like all of this that you're dealing with is a problem, right? Um, but we had to realize that their core value, what they were saying is like, you know, that we're going to be okay, or we have faith, right? We're, you know, um, the way that we see it is a little bit different, right? And so people typically are operating in a very core space and some of it is cultural, some of it is through experience and the shifts in the in the uh, core values really sometimes are just uh, there for a short period of time, but the essence of how we operate is typically very limited core values. So um, thank you for that comment. A vision statement is how we're gonna get there. Your vision statement should define um, in extremely broad strokes, how we're going to achieve our mission. And then in some cases um, where companies only have one statement, and I think I have an example of one of those in here, the vision statement is the second half, which touches a little on how we get there. The vision statement um, have, I'm excuse me, the common characteristics of a vision statement are as understood and shared by members of the community. So you don't wanna use language that people be like, what, what does that mean, right? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. So we wanna use sort of, you know, some universal language there. 
broad enough to include a variety of local perspectives, inspiring and uplifting to everyone involved, and easy to communicate as well. They are generally short and things that we could put on t-shirts, which I, I love that example there. We, we, put it, we could put it on a t-shirt, right? Um, it's a statement about ideal, uh, if there was ideal conditions. So vision statements are not what you have already achieved. They're not what you've already achieved is where you want to go. So it is inspiring, right? The vision is worth committing your, your life and your time and your resources towards, right? It means, it means something. You feel passionate about it. It gives you energy, as I mentioned earlier, to do the work day in and day out. So typically it's greater than, than the, an individual. It should be greater than an individual. And the vision inspires others when they hear about it. They're inspired. Right? They're inspired. It's clear. It's a clear picture. It can serve as a useful template and a criteria for you to go back and say, is this going to help us get to where we need to go? And then you can create goals around it. And you can create evaluation around it. Again, this is something that the Expand Now team will be helping um, folks with if you need assistance or just want to run stuff past our team around creating goals um, evalu and the evaluation progress? Is it matching up for you? And then when people read your vision, they get a real clear example of where you're going and how they may be able to join you on that road. The vision gives you credibility. Like you are the experts in this, whatever that is, whatever that might be, right? You're going to take people down this road. And when you get there, you're going to, this is what you're going to have. It should be believable for if, if the stretch between the current reality and the future is too great, it can weaken the credibility as well. So vision statements, to be healthy adolescents, to serve healthy babies, to create caring parents, right? Or whatever that might be, to be, to serve, to create. So these are things that connect. These are the action and this is the outcomes which you're trying to achieve. LinkedIn, see so LinkedIn has one statement. Create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And its mission statement is connect the world's professions to make them more productive and successful. And they link it together, right? Connect the world's professions to make them more productive and successful. Create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And as I read LinkedIn's and I, looked on their, on their site and I went to my LinkedIn page and I was like, oh yeah, I could see how they're doing that, right? Even though now they have like the pay, I was thinking about, oh, but now if you didn't have a paid platform, will it stu still do this? And in many ways, yes, right? They, they can say, yes, we still are able to do this even on the freed, free website, free platform. So then when we talk about measurement and quantifying it, right, which is measure, which is which is, uh, you know, you could quantify and qualify it. So check your math, right? One of the common problems with the vision statement is sometimes it's way too specific, right? Um, your vision statement could be long-term and idealistic of the future that doesn't yet exist. Again, not being too specific, right? Um, like LinkedIn didn't say we're going to, let's see, it didn't say we're going to create an economic opportunity, Um for every woman of the global workforce, right? That's too specific, right? Or everybody from age 35 to 50, right? Too, again, might be too specific. And also they want to be global, so they wanna keep it really broad. You might want to re refine to meet your target audience as well, right? Um, and also the what we call the, um, quantifying and quanti qualifying is the, the quantifying is the numbers and then the other part of, we, of, of us evaluating is do people feel something? Is there some sort of emotional connection to 
um, to what you're, you're saying that you want to do? Can people get behind your vision? When we create these statements, we learn first of all about what is important. So maybe you want to do listening sessions or maybe you want to run your thoughts um, by a group of people with a focus group or informal or formal. Maybe you want to um, interview folks about what it is that you, you want to do. If this is new, if, if, if some of you have already done the program or you already create have a program in existence, um, you might want to, that this is a really good time to check out. Are we doing what we said we, we wanted? Oh, that was quick. I don't know why I did that. Hold on one second. Are we doing what we said we wanted to do, right? And then decide on the general focus. So the stuff that we do before that, these are the things that we could do before we start creating our um, vision and mission statements. And then decide how we will use it. Or how are we gonna use this going forward as well? In our brainstorming sessions about our vision, and, and also we could do this for our mission, is consider what makes you unique. So this is just a question that you could ask in brainstorming this and, and talking about this. Is what makes us unique? This is absolutely required for your vision statement. Again, we you looked at the LinkedIn example. Um, you know what, I'm gonna add that in next time, Hana. We should have the Facebook example. Let's look at the difference, right? What's the difference between a Facebook and a, and a um, in the LinkedIn mission, right? We probably know off the top of our head that Facebook is about connection, personal connection, whereas LinkedIn is about workforce, de workforce development and opportunities, right? The other thing is you could ask is about, is, does it, is it clear what we actually do? Again, we mentioned this before, I mentioned it before, outcome focused. And then it could be short, it should be short, two sentences, specific, present tense, simple and ambitious, which is also very difficult and that we're saying it's futuristic, but you're wording it in present tense. So remember that future, but present tense language. Any question about the vision before we move on to mission? Go ahead, you can unmute. Are you gonna type it? Okay. What do you mean by output? Okay. So when we talk about output, like that's not, you don't get into um, the evaluation part in your vision, right? You don't say by doing such and such necessarily, right? And then be really data specific. Great question. Okay. So um, our mission, any other questions? I'm sorry, I went pretty quick there. Any other questions? All right. Your mission statement is your company's purpose. Why are you doing what you're doing in a perfect world? What problem are you solving? Mission statements tend to be difficult, if not impossible to achieve, but definitely inspiring. What is to be done? Concise. Now, this is where we're outcome oriented and inclusive. So it shifts a little bit to the vision to be an outcome producing. It describes what the group is doing, gonna do, and why it's going to do that. It is concise and it is outcome oriented and it is inclusive. Mission statements generally get their point across in one sentence, but not always, right? Some people may have like, three sentences that outline their mission, right? Because it might be something that's concise. It might be something that's outcome oriented. It might be something that's inclusive in your mission. It might be a little three-part thing that you have going on. Um, it could be broad statements about your group's key goals. And today we're only just doing the definitions around what this looks like, but remember, we're gonna be available for technical assistance to do all of this rumbling with you if you, if you want, right? Um, we will make ourselves available for that um, as well. So who are we serving? 
What is our target recipient? What are we contributing? What makes us special? Why do we do what we do, right? What, what, what makes us different from other organizations as well? We know that many folks provide services. Many folks provide intervention programs. Many folks you know, provide community programs, but what makes your program special? Thank you, Regina. To inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time, right? So for, for this example of their mission, they have the broadness, what we're gonna do, we're gonna inspire, and then they have how they're quantifying it. One person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. Right, so you can see the difference. This is the how to, how are we gonna do it? So our mission worksheet is what do we want to do? So these are your brainstorming questions. How will we do it? And why do we do what we do? Why do we do what we do? Any questions about that? I'm, I'm, I think I'm, this is my next to the last slide, so we could. Um, I'll probably stop sharing my screen, and if if folks want to just ask questions, you could you'll be able to ask us questions as well. That went much quicker than I thought. <laughs> All right, so I'll stop sharing just in case um folks have questions that we could collaborate and talk together. Yes, thank you. I would like to ask is um, how many folks here will be creating vision? Oh, Alana, you have a question. Uh, yes, the, um, and sorry, I don't have my camera on. My camera okay. does not work. Um, the part where you, the la on the last slide where it was that last um, part about why do we do what we do? Isn't that more of the, doesn't that fit more in the vision statement? It could fit in both. And remember, some people have a combined vision and mission statement as well, but it should reference why we do what we do. So even with the Starbucks example, for example, Alana, um, it, it to inspire and to nurture the human spirit, right? So that's what why we do what we do is to inspire and nurture. So it is an overlap. Good question. I get it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I was going to ask how many um, if folks here will be creating a mission and vision statement for the first time for their organization. Anyone? Refining it? Refining for me, I, I think um, we included a strat, we included um, strategy within our mission statement. Okay. And I, I, we had a strategic planning session. And I meant to go back to the team and saying, you know, we have to revisit this because we included strategy within it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And feel free again, Alana, to jump into a TA with us to um, get some support. And your whole group could come as well if you like. Um, we will be offering some group sessions too. So um, if you want to do that, we'll, we'll be making ourselves available for that. Um, I do have one question about the platform you're going to use. This year, are you guys going to use Flux again, or are you going to use SurveyMonkey this time? Kata, you want to take it, or would you like me to? Um, you can go ahead and take that if you don't mind. Alana, no Flux this year. We will um, BCYF will not be using Flux for the application process this year. It will be prayerfully in our in our minds a much simpler online application. Praise Straight God. Up. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> and so you see the questions. The questions have differed from last year. If you haven't had a chance, check out the application toolkit that's um, on our website. Okay. So you can get a sneak peek at the application question. So you'll notice that that differs from last year and you won't have, um, yeah, it'll be just, I, 
our, we've attempted to make it more straightforward via just a simple online application. Kat, is there anything you would add or no? Okay. Thank you, Alana, for that question. Any other questions or comments? Pam? I just had a comment. I wanted to share with you because uh, many of you may already have your vision, mission statement already created. Um, BCYF is not just interested in you all getting funding, but being able to grow and expand. And sometimes those core values can be areas of conflict. And so it's really important for you to look at those. So even if you have organizational values, as you're developing your application, as you're looking at, at your, you know, what you have already stated, then you know, also consider where there could be potential areas of conflict for you amongst team members. Do you have the right people in place? Are they in the right position? So this is really important what Lori has been sharing today. So don't think of it as just words for the organization. They really do guide the actions and behaviors of your, your team members and you as well. So we want you to really consider, as Lori was emphasizing, those core values, um, as well as the mission and vision, because it all connects. And where you will find that people are out of alignment, where there's conflict in some cases, it'll be as a result of their the values being misaligned. I believe this, you believe it. This guides me, this guides you. I believe in working overtime. I don't believe in working overtime. I want to have fun, right? Uh, that, that's my fun time. I'm going home one time. So you really want to think about that. Sometimes we gloss over it, at, you know, within the organization and think, oh, we've got those already. For those of you who have not created them, really think those through. For those of you who have, you, you too want to think about those and think about potential challenges because as you're going to grow and expand, because we're going to believe that you're going to grow and expand as organization, um, you want to be able to consider those things that could potentially create conflict you for you and where you are already aligned, which is really important. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Pam. That's very um, helpful to share that. I just wanted to let everyone know I did put the um, Regina had mentioned the application toolkit so I did um, drop that file into the chat. Um, so within the application toolkit you'll find some um, answered questions about the application process, as well as what it means to be a BCYF grantee in terms of requirements and things such as such as that, um, and also at the end of it, there is um, the application um, or an outline of the applications that you can begin to prepare that information and you know what will come. And as a reminder, the application does open on March 7th. So just wanted to share that information. Thank you, Hannah. Regina also put a, a, a good nugget in the chat um, based, you know, piggybacks off of what Pam said. Uh, for those with established organizational values, consider the value of your organization um, with BCYF and where they align. That's a very good point as well. Um, Pam and I will also be happy to do the vision, I mean, so the core values exercises with you or your teams as well um, during our group session. So sign yourselves up. We, as you could tell, is one of our favorite things to teach and develop with, with groups and teams and leaders. So feel free. All right, any other questions? Awesome. I wish that on that note, since Laura, you brought up um, signing up for some of that additional support. Uh, we do know that these sessions are, are condensed and there's not you know, the full time to really go through those worksheets during this time together in the large group setting. Um, but I did just drop a link to sign up for either one-on-one -on -one application support or some group application support. You'll see for one-on-one -on -one application support, there are a, a ton of different time blocks that you can sign up for. If none of those time blocks work, there is a survey link that you can, um, you can submit a few other or request a few other times um, and we'll do our best to accommodate you there. And then for the group support, there are some different topics that are listed. Um, so you can kind of browse through those and see what area you might want um, some additional support in. So I wanted to share that link so you all have that resource. 
Thank you so much, Hannah. Um, and I did get a question in the chat about how the materials from today's session will be shared. Um, they will all be posted on the BCYF website. So let me drop that link. Um, they'll be posted. The recording from the session will be posted um, hopefully about within a week from the session. Um, and the other materials will be posted soon after. So that is the um, I just dropped in the link to all things 2023 Grassroots Fund. So um, you can also find their information for further sessions. Um, so we have a session tomorrow at five o'clock um, and some sessions next week and in following weeks as well. And again, all of that information and how to register can be found at this website as well. Thank you, Hannah. And could you remind them of the title of tomorrow's session? The title for tomorrow's session, it is on um program design so the title is winning and I, i'm pulling it up right now the full title <laughs> i know i sorry winning designing your program for success is the topic for tomorrow and it is being led by dr sharon jones eversley and that is at five o'clock so hopefully we will see some of your faces there tomorrow as well thank you all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, Pam, myself, Dr. Sharon, um, and Amy, um, the Expand Now team, hope to see you um, in some of the technical assistance rooms. Um, we're here to serve, and we look forward to meeting each of you. And, and please feel free to lean into us. That's what we're here for. I want to just thank Hannah for keeping us all in order. Well, thank you very much, Lori. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for sharing your expertise with us this this afternoon. Um, I also did just drop in a JOT form. Um, this is just a session evaluation form. If you could take a couple of minutes to complete that, that would be so appreciated. All of your feedback um, will be taken and used to help us continue developing the pre-application technical assistance that we are providing. So we would greatly appreciate all your feedback. Um, and with that, unless there are other questions, um, we can end this session. I'll stop recording and I wish you all well. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.